enzymes need specific conditions to actually perform optimally. So an enzyme's activity is affected by the conditions that it's in. An enzyme must be presented with optimum environmental conditions to work at their maximum capacity. Enzyme catalysts are able to speed up or slow down reactions without a change in temperature. This is extremely important in cells since heat can damage living tissue. Some factors that influence the enzyme that have the ability to alter or reduce their effectiveness include temperature, pH, substrate concentration, cofactors and coenzymes, and inhibitors. In this video, we're only focusing on temperature and we're going to go through pH and the others in other videos. What does denature mean? It's very important to understand this word. It comes up a lot in your textbook. So D means the opposite of, and nature means its natural form. So you can see here, we have the functional form of the protein. And if it's denatured, it means that it changes from its natural shape. This protein here is denatured, and that means that it's not able to perform its function. How are enzymes denatured? Enzymes can also be denatured because of UV radiation. This is similar to humans. Our body can also be affected by the UV rays. We can get cancers, for example, from UV radiation. Chemicals can also denature enzymes. So if you were to put an egg or raw meat into an acid, it actually ends up cooking over time, which demonstrates the denaturing of proteins. An example that I have had personally is I had chicken, raw chicken, and I marinated it in lemon juice and some olive oil, and I wanted to marinate it for a day, thinking that it would soak into the chicken. The next day, the chicken was actually white on the outside. The acid from the lemon actually cooked the chicken. So yes, chemicals can also denature enzymes. Agitation can also denature enzymes. When beating egg whites, so if you beat up egg whites or even cream, but egg whites becomes quite thick and creamy. It turns it into a meringue. It changes the functional protein so they're not able to function. Similar with cream. Now, enzymes need certain conditions for maximum efficiency. Most work best at a certain temperature. In humans, it's around 35 to 40 degrees. So I've said here 37 degrees in mammals. And the speed of the reaction they are catalyzing decreases if the temperature varies from this range. And that's shown in this diagram here. We have a specific range, and this is the increased rate of reaction. Now, with temperature, outside this rate, you can see a dramatic decline when the temperature increases, which is important. When the temperature decreases, you can see that the rate of the enzyme working does decrease as well, but not as dramatically as excessive heat. In most living things, enzymes function normally at temperatures up to about 40 degrees Celsius. Above this temperature, their efficiency does decrease. At temperatures above 60 degrees, most enzymes stop functioning altogether. You can see in this diagram, we have a substrate that fits an enzyme perfectly. When there's heat above 40 degrees Celsius, the enzyme starts to denature or change shape. This is because heat causes the hydrogen bonds that maintain the form of the enzyme to break. And this, in turn, alters the, both the structure and the shape of the molecule. The molecule is said to denature. Any change in shape that affects the active site will alter the functioning of the enzyme because the altered active site is no longer reciprocally shaped to the substrate molecule. This substrate will not fit into this active site. This sensitivity to conditions, as with temperature change, is related directly to the protein structure of enzymes. When the enzyme is denatured due to heat, this is actually a permanent change and the enzyme can no longer catalyze a reaction. This means that the enzyme will stay in its denatured form. Excessive cold also causes an enzyme to change shape and its functioning to slow down as shown in this graph here. But the change in shape due to extreme cold can often be reversed. So in this case here, 
extreme cold, the enzyme may be able to regain its shape and not stay denatured. When enzymes are heated beyond their optimum temperature range, they have denatured completely and they will stay denatured. An example in this diagram here, we have a protein that denatures when an egg is cooked, for example. Now, a protein might denature, but it might actually be able to um, go back to its original form if only warmed slightly. So it depends on how much heat it's exposed to. Real life examples of denaturing includes cooked eggs and heated meat with milk with film on top. So that film that actually collects on top of milk is denatured protein. So when you take your milk out of the microwave and it has that film, it's actually protein denatured. Thank you, that's it with enzymes and temperature. Thank you.